Ismail Oakeshott, um, Matt Hancock says what you've done is a massive betrayal. He's right, isn't he? I'm really happy to address that question. Look, the betrayal was of the entire population in a deeply flawed response to the pandemic. Every single one of us in this country is paying the price for the mistakes made. And it is incumbent on me as a journalist, sitting on 2.3 million words that cast an extraordinary light on what was really going on to get that out there. All and if the his same, reputation he... takes a bit of a bash, and if mine does, that's fine, because it's not about us. Was there any kind of legal undertaking on your part when you dealt with Matt Hancock that you would not release these messages? Suffice to... No, there wasn't, because I didn't have... I don't understand what bit of this is difficult for you to understand. When we signed our written agreement, there were no WhatsApp messages. They didn't come to me until halfway through the project. So, no, there's nothing specific about WhatsApp ag agreements in our, in our contract, as it were. Uh, but, but that's by the by. I've had plenty of legal advice. I'm not a fool. I wouldn't have gone into this without checking the grounds that I'm on. And the grounds that I'm on is that there is an overwhelming public interest defence to releasing this material. So if Matt Hancock wants to go down the legal route, then he's very welcome to try doing that. He can lawyer up if he wants. It's not going to prevent what's already out. It's not going to prevent more stuff coming out. And the vast majority of people, I think, will be pleased that they now have an opportunity to scrutinise what really went on as a result of these leaks. And specifically today, the latest uh, uh, set of emails and messages released talks about policing. Yeah. What do you make of the, the comment, for instance, from Matt Hancock that, you know, Plod has got his marching orders? What do you think of that? Well, I know that Plod had his marching orders to visit my home on Easter Day. I had two police officers turn up at my home in the Cotswolds to check up on me to see if I was or wasn't quarantining. As it happened, uh, I'd actually finished my period of quarantine, as they should well have known if they had been looking at the records, which doubtless weren't very joined up. But they were acting in circumstances where there was a real fear that this pandemic could be very, very dangerous and could kill a lot of people and governments were having to take decisions <laughs> in those circumstances. Well, I can tell you that when the police visited my property, uh, we were a year into the pandemic. We knew then uh, that it posed only a very, very small risk to the majority of people who weren't vulnerable anyway, who weren't very elderly. By then, we actually had the vaccine. So, look, there could be no justification for using precious police resources to go and check up on otherwise law-abiding citizens. No regrets about the way you've conducted this, the way you've brought these messages out into public? No regrets whatsoever. The number of messages I'm receiving, the people that are coming up to me on the street saying thank you, some of those messages are really moving. People want to know the truth. If I have to take a bit of a kicking for that, that is fine. I'm big enough to take it. I want to put this out there. It is the right thing to do. The Telegraph has done a magnificent job and there's much more to come. Ismail Oakeshott, thanks very much. Thank you.